praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Can we all stand in this house? Is anybody alive? Amen. Can we just give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this place and just worship him, invite his presence in here tonight? It's Wednesday night. Lots of us came in here after a long day, but we can be recharged tonight. We can be strengthened tonight. Let's just call on the name of the Lord right now and just invite his presence in this room. Oh God, we call on the name of Jesus right now. Lord, we're asking that you would just have your way in this place, oh God, that you would move and need you would, Lord, just inhabit the praises of your people tonight, Lord. Move on our worship, Lord, we pray. Move on every need in here tonight, Lord. Move on every circumstance in here tonight, Lord. We come to lift up the name of Jesus. We came to worship you, O oh God. We're asking that your presence, your power, your spirit would manifest so mightily in this house tonight, Lord. Touch every life. Touch every need, Lord. Move through the worship. Move through the word, O oh God. Hallelujah. Why don't you just do that? Just make some noise. Pray in tongues. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We call on your name tonight, Lord. Let's worship him together. Let's worship him together tonight. Everyone needs compassion.
loves the Lord this evening. How many people love the Lord this evening? So excited. I'm always excited just to be in his house, to be in his presence. I don't know. I'm excited. And I love you all. Just continue to worship with us.
Come on, believers, let's sing it out. Let's welcome him. Let us be a cheer tonight for the Father. Fill it, fill it, God. Fill it, God.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just tell him how good he is and just worship him for a little bit and just entertain his presence that's already here tonight? Maybe just raise a hand. Just tell him. Maybe you don't know what to say to him. Just say, I love you, Jesus. Thank you for the breath in my lungs, Lord. Thank you for the clothes on my back, Lord. Thank you for a roof over my head, God. We don't have to articulate King James Old English, English language. He just wants us to worship him and praise him. We don't have to have it, you know, a bachelor's in, in um, theology or, or things like that. He just wants to hear us give the breath back to him that he gave to us. And he loves it when we say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, there's nobody like you in all the earth. Lord, you're awesome. You're mighty, Lord. You're holy. You're righteous, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We entertain your presence tonight. You're feeling heavy tonight. Why don't you just do that? Just push through that heaviness. Push through that, the, the way your weeks been. Push through the tiredness you felt at work today and just begin to entertain the Lord. Begin to worship the Lord and he'll inhabit your praise. Let's give him something to inhabit tonight. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Just wait on the Lord for a couple minutes. We came to wait on him tonight. We came to worship him. I feel that we need to do something in here tonight. So many times, and I felt this all week. So many times we come to church and we, we have needs. All of us do. We're human. But we focus in on our needs instead of, not that God has needs, but you know the Bible instructs us to pray for his kingdom come and his will be done. And I've been seeing on the news all week about Afghanistan. And there's Christians being persecuted over there. And uh, we need to pray for Afghanistan. We need to pray for the church in Afghanistan. Can we do that tonight? We'll, we'll pray for our, our, our co-laborers and our brothers and sisters who cannot do this where they're at right now. I've seen on Facebook the, you know, Islam and all those terrorist groups are writing letters to churches. Just to update you, if you, if you don't know what happened, the, the Taliban took over Afghanistan and they wrote letters to churches and said, we know who you are and we're coming for you. And, and so many times we get our toes stubbed or someone loves, looks at us, at us the wrong way and uh, we get offended and we think we're being persecuted. But on the other side of the world, there's people being killed for naming the name of Christ. So why don't we just focus in on that tonight and just pray for our brothers and sisters who cannot worship like this. They don't have the freedom to do this. They're being persecuted for their faith. And I guarantee you God will bless us for it. When we focus on other people and other needs and we pray for other people, he, he, he hears that and he pays attention to that. So I don't know what you came in here with tonight, but let's just fix our eyes on Jesus and let's just pray for Afghanistan right now. Father, and every other persecuted group, every other persecuted Christian, every other persecuted denomination, wherever they may be in the world, Lord, we lift our voices tonight, Lord. Your word tells us to remember those who are in prison, to pray for those who are persecuted, Lord, because it could easily be us. And Lord, it is us because we're part of the same body. By one spirit, we're baptized into one body. And Lord, we pray for every persecuted Christian 
Christian, Lord. Every person who's facing terrorism, every person who's facing trials in the other side of the world, Lord. Those who cannot worship, those who have to hide to praise you, those who have to go in caves to worship you. Oh God, we're asking for grace tonight. We're asking for your mercy tonight. We know that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And Lord, we wage warfare in the spirit tonight. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan. We pray for those who cannot praise you, who cannot worship you, who are being persecuted tonight. We're asking, Lord, that you would intervene, that you would have mercy and grace, Lord, because you're a merciful God. We ask, Lord, that you would just intervene into our co co parts on the other side of the world, Lord, and have your way, Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, every pastor, Lord, that's being hurt, every pastor's wife, every family, oh God, that cannot worship you freely, that cannot, Lord, praise you freely, we pray for them. We stand in the gap for them. And Lord, we don't want to lose sight that we have it so good, that we're so blessed to be here tonight, that we can come here and worship you in freedom and in spirit and in truth, oh God. And we pray tonight that you would have your way in these people's lives, Lord. We pray for the government, Lord, the leaders, Lord, that you would have your way in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's, play, let's pray for revival now. Let's pray for this house and every truth preaching house that's not just hungry for religion, but wants to genuinely see God pour out his spirit. Can we do that tonight? Can we focus on his kingdom and his will for Winnipeg and for us tonight? Oh God, we pray for, Lord, this house. We pray for our pastor, Lord. We pray for the leadership of this place, Lord, that you would align us with your word, align us with heaven, Lord, that you would pour out your spirit in this house, that there would be no other agenda in this place, but to see the manifest glory of God in this place, Lord. We pray for revival in Winnipeg. Revive us, Lord. Revive this house so our family can be saved, so people can be saved, Lord, so backsliders can come here and find hope, so drug addicts can come here and find freedom, Lord, so backslidden wives and husbands and daughters can come here and find you, Jesus. We pray for the spirit of revival to overtake this house, to overtake every heart that calls Believer's Church their home. Lord, that it's never been about us, but it's always been about you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Your will be done in Believer's Church. Your will be done in Winnipeg, on earth as it is in heaven, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come here, Leo. Come here, man. 
Thank you, Jesus. And his love Doctors thought he had cancer because he was having ulcers and stomach and stuff like that, but they did tests, no cancer, but he has a bacterial infection in his stomach and uh, he needs to get the medication. It's super expensive and uh, we have to pay for it, but God can heal him tonight. So I want you to just raise your hands. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over Leo right now from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Isaiah 53, by your stripes he's healed, oh God. Lord, no medication, no treatment or anything, but heal and touch his stomach right now in Jesus' name, according to your word, oh God, according to your will, on earth as it is in heaven, Lord. Touch and heal in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. If you believe God's a healer, why don't you just clap your hands? And at the same time, if you need something from him, why don't you just raise your hand and just entertain him, call on him. Oh God, every need represented here tonight, every physical ailment, every pain, every disease, go in the name of Jesus Christ. Every affliction, everything that would come against the people of God, leave this room now in the name of Jesus. Jesus. just clap our hands to him and just shake off the weightiness and the tiredness and all that. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I love what I feel in the house tonight. I came in here so tired earlier from work and so weary, but there's something about praising the Lord that just kind of takes care of all that. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And we just got a prayer request coming here right now. And we're going to pray for that need before we take up the offering tonight. It's uh, Jim Staples. Amen. He needs healing in his body. Strength in his body. Let's just bring that need before the Lord right now. Father, we lift this man up to you right now, Lord. We don't know him, but you know him, Lord. His name is Jim Staples. We call him to you by name, Lord. We pray that you would touch his body. Let strength and power and healing and might flow to him right now in Jesus' name. Lord, you're our healer. You're still Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals all thine diseases. And Father, we pray right now for this man that healing would come, that he would feel what we feel here tonight, Lord, that he would feel your touch, that that he would feel your presence, that he would feel your power, that he would feel your strength even now, Lord, in his body, that strength would come to him right now according to the name and the word and the authority of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let it be done, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're going to wait on you for your tithes and offerings tonight. If we can get the offering plates up here at the front. And uh, we're just going to continue this atmosphere in our giving. Because how many know giving is worship to the Lord? 
as well as worship is worship. He, 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 he'll accept anything from us. Amen. But he, he loves when we, when we worship him. So if we can get the offering plates up here and just continue this spirit in our giving. At this church, we march around the front. We present our offerings and our gifts before the Lord. And uh, we don't want to be putting you on the spot or shoving an offering plate in your face. We don't, we don't do that here. So God bless you guys as you give tonight. Do it as you're, out of your love for Jesus, out of your love for this ministry, and out of your belief for the vision and ministry of this house. Amen. Not out of guilt, not because I'm asking you to, but because the Bible says to. We can give online as well at the Tithely app, in the App Store or the Play Store. And we can also go to www.thebelieverschurch.ca under the online giving section, and it will redirect us to Tithely, and it's super easy, super efficient, and uh, we know that God will bless you for it because it's in His Word, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We want to be blessed, but how many know we got to bless God in all areas of our life, including our finances? So you want to be blessed today? Give unto the Lord out of your act of worship. God bless you guys tonight. Sister Diane is at the back if you want to give by debit or credit. Amen. We're going to sing this other chorus tonight.
Thank you so much. Do you feel the sweet presence of the Lord tonight? Hello? Do you feel the sweet presence of the Lord tonight? Amen. I know I do. I just thank God for Wednesday night, that midweek service. We definitely need it. It's our, our spiritual food to get us through. And you know, I was just standing back there watching all of this and seeing the attendance. And, I, and you know, Pastor spoke a few weeks about the suddenly. And that suddenly has happened in our church here. It has happened. We've made that suddenly, that breakthrough. We've made the breakthrough. And the next suddenly is going to be the revival. Our pastor over here, Dylan, talked about our city is going to have a revival. Our church is going to have a revival. We are heading in that direction. Every knee will bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord in our city. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are so blessed. Well, next we are going to be back here on Saturday night at 7 o'clock right here in the sanctuary. And the power of prayer, that is what is ne- that. That's why this is happening in our church. Yes. Really, it's the power of prayer. Yes. We pray about this. We pray that people will come and get the Holy Spirit. And we pray for our city for revival. You know, when we don't pray, we're telling God we don't need him. That's really what we're doing yep. in our home, in our family, in our relationships, in our finances. And that's why he loves prayer. Because we are telling him that we do need him. So when we come here on Saturday night, and again, as our pastor Dylan spoke earlier, you know, we, we pray, we stand in the gap for people, family in this church, our family, our brothers and sisters. We pray for our city, our nation. It's not about us. It is not about us. So, you know, we need more warriors, prayer warriors here. We really do. I mean, we're having a wonderful attendance, but there's never too many. Never too many, and I, I, would, I would welcome you to come. That is 7 o'clock Saturday night right here, right here. Please try and come. It's important. It's important. We want revival. We've got to pray about it. Yeah. We've got to get on our knees and pray about it. That's the truth. Saturday night, 7 o'clock. Then on Sunday, we will have our service at 11 o'clock. Again, a great service, a wonderful message, a wonderful lesson for all of us. We'll be taught here. And then we will move into the following week, which is Tuesday, Celebrate Recovery, wonderful, wonderful Christ-based program. If you're struggling with hurts, habits, or hang-ups, this is definitely the place for you. Six o'clock, Tuesday night, over in the other section of the church. This is important because you should not be struggling alone. No one should. And you are welcome in this place. As you will be encouraged, you will be loved on, You'll feel welcome, so please put that on your calendar, 6 o'clock on Tuesday night. And again, we'll be back next Wednesday as we are tonight. So God bless you, and enjoy the message tonight. I know you will, and you'll be blessed. Amen. Praise God. And let's not forget, Sunday is Baptism Sunday. Amen. And we are looking forward to that. Well, I went to the enemy's camp, and I... Took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole from me. I took back what he stole from me. I went to the enemy's camp. And I took back what he stole from me. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. Well, Satan is under my feet. Went to the enemy's camp. And I took back what he stole from me. I took back what he stole from me. I took back what he stole from me. Well, I went to the enemy's camp. And I took back what he stole from me. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. Well, Satan is under my feet. Well, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. I took back what he stole from me. I took back what he stole from me. Well, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. Well, he's under my feet. He's under my feet. I know he's under my feet. He's under my feet. I said Satan is under my feet. Well, I went to the enemy's camp. i 
Hey! Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this house. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. Some of us are singing, Satan's under my feet. A few others are singing, he's under my seat, because you haven't moved out of it yet. <laughs> hey! Hallelujah! I don't know where Satan is in your life, but in my life, he's under my feet. I've been given dominion over him. Well, I thought I was in a spirit-filled church. I said, I've been given dominion over him. <laughs> oh, my, 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 my. Well, let's go to the word of the Lord if we can. 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 1. I've preached this message or, or story from this uh, portion of scripture many times in the past. And uh, I was going to preach this on Sunday, but as you know, the Holy Ghost just moved in this place, and uh, we never did get a chance to preach. But I felt tonight we would go ahead and, and bring it, because I believe it's a prophetic word for this house tonight. First Samuel chapter 30, and verse 1, And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziklag had smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. Had taken the women captives that were therein and slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. Oh, Lord, the Lord just spoke to me. Say, it's not dead, it's just stolen. Whoa, that'll preach. It's not dead, it's just been stolen. Lord, if I had a graphic, that's what I'd call it tonight. It's not dead, it's just been stolen. And so there's some things that the enemy has stolen from you and he's lied to you and said that's dead. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Joseph in a pit. They said he's dead. He wasn't dead. He was just stolen away. My Lord have mercy. Uh, and it just requires us going to the enemy's camp and taking back the things that have been stolen from us. Praise God. And had taken the women captive that were there and slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David said, David and all the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captive, the Benoam, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. David said unto Abathar the priest, Hamelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abathar brought the ephod to David. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. And so David went, and he took the 600 men that were with him, and came to the brook Besser, and those who were left behind stayed. Let me skip a bunch of uh, uh, scriptures, and let me go down now to verse 30, sorry, verse 17 of chapter 30. And David smote them from the twilight even unto the evening of the next day. And there escaped not a man of them save 400 young men which rode upon camels and fled. And David recovered all. Say all. all. Say he recovered all. all. Say he recovered all. all. Say I'm going to recover all. Shout I'm going to recover all. And nothing was lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoiled or anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. And I want to preach to us this topic tonight, recover all. Recover all. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your word. We thank you for each precious person that's here tonight. And I pray, God, that you would touch this body of mine. Help me to bring forth the word of God with power and authority. Lord, let, let there be revelation and illumination that would come into this place tonight. 
Lord, that you would give direction to your people, to your church. God, and this would be a life transformation for somebody. And Lord, then this would be a pivotal service for this assembly. And I ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, in Jesus' name. You thought you just came to church, but what you really came to do was recover all tonight. You came tonight because there are some things that's been taken from you. And as the Holy Ghost just spoke to us a few moments ago, amen, they're not dead. Amen, but you think your dreams are dead. You think revival is dead. You think the things that God has for you is dead, but it's not dead dead. Amen. It's just been stolen away. But I come to tell you today, what has been stolen can be brought back again. The things that have been taken from you can be restored to you again. Amen. And with the help of God tonight, amen, we are going to see restoration in this service. But more than just that, this is going to be the beginning of seeing restoration on a grand scale. Somebody say amen. 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 So David came back and they found out that Everything was gone. The Amalekites had come in and had stolen everything. Stolen the money, stolen the food, stolen their sons and their daughters, stolen their wives. Everything that was there was gone. And what they couldn't take, they burnt it to the ground. And so they came back to nothing but smoldering uh, ashes of what used to be. And the Bible says that they lifted up their voice and they wept until they had no more tears to weep. I don't know if you've ever cried like that. But after a while, the tears dry up and it's just dry heaves and sobbing and, and crying. And so it is. Uh, amen that they uh, that they lifted up their voice and they cried and wept until they had no more voice to cry no more tears would come out. Amen. They had cried themselves weary. They have literally cried themselves sick. And, the, and then after they had cried and mourned, they began to talk about David and said, he's our leader. He's the one who brought us into this. And they begin to talk about stoning David. It's nice to be the leader when everything is going good and everybody is singing your praises. It's not so nice to be the leader when nobody understands what you're doing or why you're doing it. Come on, somebody. And so David felt alone, but he did something. And those of you who have been around this church have heard me preach it, but we got so many new ones here tonight, so let me preach it again for just a minute or two. David did something that was very strategic and very important. The Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. I want you to understand you might not always have a cheer leader in your corner. There might not always be somebody to cheer you on. There might not always be somebody to lift you up. There might not always be somebody to comfort you when you're going through. There might not always be somebody who understands or who has ever walked a mile in your shoe. So if you're going to serve the Lord and be victorious, you're going to have to learn how to encourage yourself in the Lord. I think it sounded so Something like this. David said, I remember the time the lion came after one of my daddy's sheep and God gave me the lion. And I remember the day that bear came and was going to kill my daddy's lamb. And God delivered the bear and the lion into my hand. And if God gave me the bear and if God gave me the lion, he is going to give me this victory as well. Come on, somebody. If God's ever helped helped you before. He'll help you again. If he picked you up yesterday, he'll pick you up today. If he encouraged you last month, he'll encourage you today. If he healed you a year ago, he can heal. Oh, come on, somebody. I said, you're going to have to learn how to encourage yourself in the Lord. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. You're going to have to pardon me. I I've got to have myself a praise break because if I don't praise him, I'm going to break down. But instead of breaking down, I'm going to have a breakthrough. Yeah. 
Hey. And he encouraged himself in the Lord. Child of God, if God ever did something for you in the past, it's proof that he can do it again. If he's ever helped you in the past, he can help you now. If he ever delivered you in the past, he can deliver you today. If he's ever encouraged you in the past, he can encourage you today. If he's ever brought you through a valley, he'll bring you through this valley. If he ever brought you through a problem, he'll bring you through this problem. Somebody say, he didn't bring me this far just to leave me now <laughs> and so he encouraged himself the first step in getting restored is you're going to have to encourage yourself because not always brother Donald can somebody encourage you the way you need to be encouraged many times people just tell you what you want to hear and not what you need to hear don't me how much of a right I have to be upset. Don't tell me how justified I am to feel the way I feel. Somebody tell me to just praise him until the victory comes. <laughs> if you can't encourage me, that's all right. I won't backslide. I'll encourage myself. Don't worry about me, Pastor Nidra. If you're too busy to take my call tomorrow, I know a man whose line ain't never busy, and I know how to encourage myself. Whoa. I said I know how to encourage myself he healed my body so many times he picked me up so many times he gave me a miracle so many times he's come through for me so many times let me just testify to myself <laughs> ah, Brother Moises, you told me you almost died, but the Lord raised you up. You don't need my encouragement. You know how to encourage yourself. Somebody just could walk a mile in my shoes. Honey, they, they probably wouldn't be able to handle a mile in your shoes because God has given you the grace. To, oh, you're not hearing me. I say God has given you the grace to walk in your own shoes. My shoes may kill you, but I've got the grace to, to walk in my shoes. My shoes may kill you, but I've got the anointing to walk in my shoes. Your shoes may destroy me, but you've been called to walk in your shoes. Preacher, it's Wednesday night. Calm down. You got to know how to encourage yourself in the Lord. If sister so-and-so would just call and encourage me, that's good. That's needful. But guess what, honey? I ain't going to backslide if she don't call. I know how to encourage myself. If Brother Ian would just give me a word from the Lord, but that would be great if he did. But even if he doesn't, I'm going to make it because I know how to encourage myself in the Lord. Hey, Adabasha, Harabahusha. Well, I think we need to give the Lord a hand of praise right now. Come on, I want you to praise him. I want you to praise him because of something he did for you. Come on. Go ahead, do it right now. Go ahead, remind yourself. Go ahead, remind yourself of the time you were sick. The time you were broke. The time when you were so low. But he picked you up and he turned all around for you. <laughs> I remember one time I was on the platform of my home church where I grew up I was the assistant pastor and I was going through enough hell for me, myself and everybody and we used to sit back here actually I was over more on this side 
We used to sit here. The pulpit was there. The piano was over there. And uh, drums were over there. And the organ was over here. And... Uh, and they were singing. Nobody was really getting with it much. And I was just standing thinking about everything I'm going through and how bad it is and how low I am. And I could almost hear the devil laughing at me. All of a sudden, something come on me. I come out of my seat. I went down the front steps and I got in the altar and I began to dance before the Lord. Not because everything was going good, but because everything was going wrong. But I know there's praise in my worship. There's power in my praise. And I begin to encourage myself in the Lord. And it's amazing how quickly things can turn around when you begin to encourage yourself. Oh, I gotta, I gotta hurry. I can stay there. But I gotta hurry. The next thing the Bible says. It, he inquired of the Lord. After you get encouraged, brother, brother Daniel, I don't know, but these, I am really echoing through these bass speakers. Bad up here. You see, there's no sense of going to God in prayer while you're still bummed out. Well, pastor, no, 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 no. Let me, let me just help you a little bit. You need to encourage yourself in the Lord. And then once you're encouraged, because guess what? If I don't encourage myself first, guess what I'm going to do? Oh, God. You know how mean Sister Jay has been to me. Smite her, God. Smite her hard. Smite her all the way home from church today, God. I cancel that in Jesus' name. And I take my bad attitude into prayer. But if I can go, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. But if I can encourage myself, Brother Ian, and I can go into prayer in courage, even though everybody's got stones ready to throw at me, I'm encouraged. I've encouraged myself. And now I'm, I've got my mind under submission. I've got my attitude under control. I've got my emotions in check. Now I can hear from the Lord. Because a lot of what we call hearing from God is just hearing from our emotions. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Uh, no, I'm not going to do it. I was, I, I, I'm just going to keep driving by that stop. So encourage yourself and then go to the Lord in prayer. And then you will be able to hear the clear direction. Oh, I, I got to stop here. I can't. I got to pull the car over into this pit stop here. Because if, if, you, if you're in your emotions, you can't hear the clear voice of God. But it's when my spirit is right and when my attitude is right and, and when I've got my emotions in check, then I can hear the voice of God. And lots of times, the voice of God is going to be contrary to what my emotions Emotions would have told me. So we inquired of the Lord. See, when we're in our emotions, Brother Danny, I know I'm working you back there. Now that you got that fixed, can you just give me a little more monitor? <laughs> I'm going to double your pay, okay? It's going to be all right. Double of zero is still zero. He does it because he loves the Lord. Give him a hand. And Brother Dakota and Brother Christian back there. And so he, he could hear clearly the voice of God. And it was, it was go and pursue. But when we're in our emotions, it would be just stay here and wallow. Feel sorry for yourself. Get mad at somebody. But because he got his spirit right before he went to prayer, he could hear clearly the direction of God that said, Go and recover all, and you will 
not fail. What a promise of God. Go, you will without fail recover all that's been taken from you. And so they pursued. They caught up. I got to hurry. My time is getting away. They caught up and they killed the enemy. There was only a few young men who were on camels who were able to get out of there. And they recovered. The Bible says every man got his wife back, got their sons back, their daughters back, their riches back. The Bible says they recovered all and nobody lost anything. This is the will of God for his church tonight. This is the will of God. Because we, we, we want to jump into the, the revival part of it. But I have learned that part of revival and part, Sister Heather, of taking new territory, part of that is actually recovering what's been lost first. Because you don't have faith for new territory until you get back what's been taken from you in the first place. Oh, you know, hearing me. It's hard to believe for 10 souls when you haven't seen one soul get saved. It's hard to believe for 100 people to come into this church when your own family's backslidden. And so God is trying to stir us up here today to tell you, amen, that he's wanting to restore the things that the enemy has taken from you. Part of revival is restoration. Part of being revived is being restored. I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it. I'm not done yet. I'm going to prove it to you. Amen. And so, amen, we, we find that they recovered all. Joel chapter 2, 21 says this. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. How many feels that tonight? The Lord's going to do great things. All right. Amen. Amen. Let, me, let me just stop right here. How many in this room? And I can see y'all. How many in this room have something you need to recover out of the hands of the devil? Just about everybody. I believe that. I believe that. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their spring. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord, your God, for he hath given you the former rain, and will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. We're talking about the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. There will be abundance in his, in his presence and in his house and amongst his people. And are you ready now? Because we're getting ready to talk about the outpouring of the Holy Ghost here, Brother Donald. But before we get to in the last days, saith God, Sister Jay, there's this scripture. And I will restore. Sister Heather, I want to get to that great revival we're talking about. But between here and that great revival, <laughs> is a lot of restoration. I feel that in my spirit. Does anybody feel a witness in the Holy Ghost here tonight? Hey, between here and that great outpouring, there are some things that God wants to restore to his church and to restore to his people. Okay, I got to calm down. He said, I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dwelt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed and you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed. I come to prophesy that before God pours out revival he's going to lift shame off of this house, shame off of your house, shame 
name off of the people of God. He's going to lift the reproach that the enemy has brought among us. Brother Hines, you're here tonight. Brother and Sister Bobbitt's here. How long have you been? 30 years you've been with this church, Brother and Sister Bobbitt, somewhere in that vicinity? 20? 32 years they've been in this house. 32 years they've been in this house. And they've had good times. And, and Brother Ian, you've been here quite a while. There have been good times. Brother Willie's been here a long time. Amen. There's been some good times. There's been some high times. But there's also been some canker worms. Some palmer worms. There's been some caterpillars that have come into the crop. And have eaten more than their share. And at times have laid the house of God barren as it were. But God has stepped in into this room tonight to tell us revival is coming but so is restoration and everything the devil has taken out of this house God is going to put it back Hey, we went in the last couple of months from Sister Nidra on the piano by herself with Brother Dylan. Thank God they were faithful and Brother Glenn. Amen. And look what the Lord, we had to go buy another keyboard to keep up with all the keyboard players we have in the house. God is restoring that which was taken. We couldn't keep sound men in the sound booth. We got three back in there tonight. The Lord is restoring. Storing that which was taken by the enemy. They couldn't hardly find a pastor to come and stay here. There are six pastors in this house. Look what the Lord has done. I will restore the years. I don't know about you, but I want to be in a house of restoration. I want to get in this house of restoration. And when God starts restoring this house, he's going to restore my house. Come on, somebody. Lift your hand and say, God, I'm ready for restoration. Restore. Come on, keep your hand up. I feel the Holy Ghost. Restore the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the caterpillar has destroyed in my life. Our sons, our daughters, our grandchildren, our backsliders. Oh, God, restore what the enemy has taken from us. Hey, Abahosha. Let me tell you this. It's not going to be restored without a pursuing. And how do we pursue, Pastor? Pastor Heather's already talked about it. Prayer. Prayer. Thank God for Saturday night prayer. Thank God for Saturday night prayer. We Two, two Saturday nights ago, we had a record crowd. This Saturday night gone by, we had a, another record crowd. And all of heaven began to fall down in this house. Prayer. We pursue with our prayer. We pursue with our preaching, Pastor Dylan. We pursue, saints of God, with our worship. Sunday, Sunday, they danced and danced and danced in this altar. Hallelujah. I want you to understand one thing, honey. You're not bothering me one little bit. You go on and dance. Dance, dance, dance all night. Because as you dance and as you shout, you see the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. And as you dance before the Lord, you are dancing on the kingdom of hell. My God, my God. I'm trying to get to the end afterward. But between, between the pursuing and the afterward, saith God, there is a time and the place of restoration. 
And after our joy has been restored, come on somebody. After your peace has been restored. After your hope has been restored, Sister Susan. After your spirit has been restored. After your strength has been restored like the eagles. Come on, somebody. Come on. After your anointing has been restored. Amen. After you have received restoration in your spirit, then you will have strength and be positioned to receive the afterward, saith God, I will pour out my spirit. We're trying to receive the outpouring in a broken vessel. But God's wanting to restore us so that we can receive the afterward, saith God. Am I making sense to anybody in this house? It shall come to pass. And it shall. And it shall. And it shall, turn your neighbor and say, and it shall, and it shall shall come to pass afterwards. After what? After restoration. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons, I can't get away from this. How can God pour out his spirit in Winnipeg when the church is broken, busted, and disgusted? He said, after I restore my church, after I restore my people, after I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your son, say my son. Come on, claim that somebody. Say my son. Say my daughter. I'm going to prophesy. you hear that? My son and my daughter I gotta prophesy you're not gonna get this generation there's a generation of prophets rising up and they're coming out of my home and they're coming out of your home My God, I feel like I'm preaching a conference about 10,000 people here tonight. My sons, my sons, my daughters are going to prophesy. Harabasha. Your old men are going to dream, dream. Your young men are going to see vision. Come on, Grandpa. It's time to start dreaming again. Come on, gray-haired mama. It's time to start dreaming again. Come on, young man. It's time to catch a vision of revival for this generation. Your old men are dream, dream. Your young men are going to see visions. Let the mothers and fathers of this house, oh God, stand to my feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. I prophesy. Raise your hands all over this room. I prophesy to the mothers and fathers of this house. I prophesy that you will begin to dream again. Come on, keep your hand up. Keep your hand. Come on. Come on, all you 55 plus folk. Right now, let dreams come into your spirit again. Let dreams come into your spirit again. Hallelujah. Come on, young men and women. The sons and daughters of this house are going to see vision. I loose it. I loose it. Come on. Come on. Come on. If you're 40 and under in this house, come on. Sons and daughters of this house, I loose and I impart. Amen. Apostolic ministry to you tonight. I prophesy that you will see visions.
Does anybody feel a witness in their spirit here tonight? Be seated a moment longer. If you'll give me five or ten minutes, I'll wrap this up. God gave me a scripture for every church I've pastored. He gave me a word. When I went to Nova Scotia to pastor my first church, he gave me a word. When I went to Upper Blackville, he gave me a word. When I went to Lundar, he gave me a word. When I took the position of assistant pastor in Doketown, he gave me a word. And when I came to Manitoba, he gave me actually several words. As I left New Brunswick and left everything I knew, I had the biggest U-Haul you could rent. It was packed full. Our minivan was packed full. Sister Heather, I didn't realize driving across that I, I didn't know exactly where I was leading my family into. And I didn't know if I had known, I probably wouldn't have come the heartache and pain that my little family would have to endure. But I'm going to tell you what, Sister Jay, I've got too much, and my little kids have got too much invested in this church just to walk away and not see God move. And as I drove across the border, the Lord spoke to me clearly. He said, I am bringing you into a greater anointing than you've ever had before, and you will build a great church for the kingdom of God. And I thought, it was, I thought it was the church that I was going to pastor. I was only there a, a short time. And God has called me here. And I've been here this fall. will be 10 years I've been at, well, at Believer's Church. <laughs> and I remember coming here, Sister Nidra, and I remember telling Brother Ian, Brother Ian, did I not tell you, if this church isn't running 305 years, I'll have failed God. <laughs> yeah. Well, Hello. So, Richard, we, we've run probably a thousand since I've been here, just not all at the same time. <laughs> Seriously, if we kept everybody, we'd be running multiple services out of here. But I just come to realize not everybody can handle what God's trying to do with this church. <laughs> but God gave me, for when I came to, to this church, which was Wide World of Faith at the time, he gave me this. Found in Revelation 7, sorry, Revelation 3, verse 7. He said, write, to the Phil write this to Philadelphia, to the angel of the church, to the pastor of the church of Philadelphia. The holy, the true, David's key in his hand, opening doors. <sighs> I'm taking this from the message. It may be a little different. You got King James up there, that's fine. But I'm reading this from the message. The holy, the true, David's key in his hand, opening doors. No one can lock locking doors no one can open and this is what he says i see what you've done now see what i've done he said i've see what you've done now see what i've done i've opened a door before you that no one can slam shut you don't have much strength. I know that. You use what you had to keep my word. You didn't deny me when times were rough. And watch as I take those who call themselves true believers but are nothing of the kind. Pretenders who true membership is in the club of Satan. Watch as I strip off their pretensions and they're forced to acknowledge it's you that I've loved. Because you have kept my word in passionate patience, I'll keep you safe in the time of testing that will soon be here and all over the earth. Every man, woman, and child put to the test. I'm on my way. I'll be there soon. Keep a tight grip on what you have so no one distracts and steals your crown. I'll make each of you a conqueror and a pillar in the sanctuary of God, a permanent position of honor. And then I'll write my names on you, the pillars, the name of God, the name of God's city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven, and my my new name are your ears awake listen to the wind words the spirit bloweth through the churches and God spoke to me as I came here to lead this church he said they've had a little strength they've been through a lot through the years but they have not denied my name and I have set before you an open door that no man 
can shut. It has taken us 10 years. But I feel in the Holy Ghost, we stand at that open door tonight. And God is restoring, Brother Ian, the years, wasted years, painful years, years of tear shed and misunderstanding and hurt and years that the devil has destroyed. Would you stand with me, Pastor Nidra, if you give me something? <sighs> I'm telling you, the prophetic flow is in this house right now. Horatarano, Hosharate Labosha. We're not going to give a pretty altar call tonight. If there's something you need to pursue, this altar's open. If something has been stolen from you, this altar's open. If you want to come pursue revival with us, this altar's open. I'm not going to beg you to come tonight. I'm just looking for those who want to. Those who want to come. In the closing moments of this service, you want to acknowledge the word of the Lord that has been preached over you tonight. Come on. It's not enough just to hear it. You've got to come into agreement right now, right now with that word. This altar is open. If you want to find a place to pray, but I don't think we can just run out the back door. I think we need to acknowledge the word of God that has been declared over this house tonight. Come on, find a place, find a place, find a place to talk to God. We gotta respond. We can't just hear this word and just just let it roll off our back. We've got to respond. Come on, find a place to talk to God tonight. Hallelujah. I don't, Sister Nita, can we just go to something different? I'm not feeling that in my spirit. Uh, I don't know what I feel. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do that. You know what? Jesus, 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 Jesus. Come on, let's find a place to talk to the Lord tonight. Let's find a place to talk to the Lord tonight. Come on, come on. That's it. That's it, come on. Come on. Take me back, dear Lord. Oh, yeah. To the place where I first received you. Take me back, God. Take me back. Come on, child of God, come on. Take me back. Restoration. Dear Lord, where I Restoration. First believe. Thank you, Pastor Deidre. Thank you. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord. Come on, come on, come on. To the come place on. God, restore. Where I first restore. Received you. you see what's been stolen from me? Restore Take it. Take me back. You see what's been taken? Take me back, dear 
restore it tonight, God. Church, come on, call on the name of the Lord tonight. Take me back, dear Lord. Call on the name of the Lord to tonight. The place where I first received you. Take me back. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, where I first believed. Yeah. Restoration, come on your people tonight. Take me back, dear Lord. Restoration, come on your people tonight.